Samsung's new NX30 smart camera is a mirrorless camera with an APS-C sensor, but it's so loaded with features, it's like the Swiss army knife of mirrorless cameras. Let me show you what I mean. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. In January, Samsung announced their latest smart camera, the NX30. It's a 20.3 megapixel APS-C equipped mirrorless camera in a small lightweight package that has the grip and styling cues of a DSLR camera. And the feature set is just packed with all kinds of features and functions, any one of which could make the difference for you if you're into wow features. The camera is a nice size and it's lightweight. It's a camera targeted at consumers and enthusiasts, so it's not weather sealed or ruggedized. Nevertheless, I almost always prefer a legitimate grip shape like this over a sleek, flat, modern, mirrorless, or point and shoot form factor. The only downside to the design and the grip is that the rubber material of the grip is surprisingly smooth and it's not very grippy. All the other ergonomics of the camera body are nice. Many cameras in this class are a little short on dials, but the NX30 has a command dial on top and a smart dial on the back. So making changes to settings like both aperture and shutter speed in manual mode will be intuitive. The buttons and dials all have good quality feel to them and they're in good locations. For example, I like a movie record button on the back of my camera and that's where Samsung put it. If you're a camera gear enthusiast and you look around this body, the only thing you might think is missing is the diopter control for adjusting the electronic viewfinder clarity to your specific vision. That's because this camera has a built-in tilting EVF, so you might not think to pull out the eyepiece to reveal the diopter wheel. But once you do that, you can tilt the eyepiece up to 80 degrees, so shooters and videographers filming outdoors have even more options. And it's a nice EVF with a proximity sensor to switch from the LCD when you start looking through it. And the resolution is great, 2.359 million dots. The autofocus is a hybrid autofocus system, so it has both contrast detection and phase detection autofocus points, and it grabbed fast, accurate focus in bright and moderate light. It only seemed to hunt for focus in especially low light situations, but it did capture focus where other cameras might not. Pros will appreciate the manual focusing is aided by the focus assist digital zoom capability, which can go up to 8x. And addressing the consumer market, there are special autofocus functions available for face detection and even for self portraits. And shooting or filming yourself is going to be more successful with the Twist Flip 3 inch touchscreen LCD. Now, I used to think of touchscreens as just a gimmick that people would use from time to time, but they can be really handy. Some touchscreens barely have any usable functions, but the Samsung NX30 touchscreen doesn't suffer from that problem. You can touch menus and dialog boxes, you can swipe to review your images, and you can pinch to zoom. You can even set the camera to autofocus or autofocus and shoot with a single touch. It's called touch shutter. And there's even a way to touch one spot in the frame to get the focus and touch a different spot to measure the exposure. This is a good touch screen. Now I want to tell you about the generous list of features and functions that made me think of the NX30 as being like a Swiss army knife. But first, let's talk about image quality because if you can't capture great images, nothing else matters. I was really happy with the image quality I captured with this camera. I had a chance to visit the Neon Museum in Las Vegas and I was shooting some shots well after sunset at ISO 3200. The NX30 ISO range is from 100 to 25,600, but I really didn't love any shots over 3200. So at 3200, I got about the level of image noise that I would expect in the smooth dark areas like the night sky. But the brighter image areas were really nice and definitely usable. Of course, earlier in the evening when there was more light, I was capturing color accurate, crisp images. I mostly used the kit 18 to 55 mm f3.5 to 5.6 OIS lens. With the 1.5x crop factor of the APS-C sensor, 
That means that you'll get a 27 to 82.5 millimeter equivalent field of view. And while this setup is relatively small, if you want to go even smaller, there are other lens options like this 30 millimeter f2 pancake lens. I was able to get some gorgeous shallow depth of field shots with good color. The bokeh was nice and had smooth planes of light from specular highlights, but away from the middle area of the image, the discs were a bit oval shaped rather than perfect circles. Another aspect of the NX30 that's important to both pros and entry level consumers is speed. Thanks to the Dream E4 image engine processor and shutter speeds as fast as 1 8,000th of a second, you'll be able to capture a surprising amount of action like kids sports or fast moving animals with the 9 frames per second continuous shooting. In fact, if you're willing to downsize to 5 megapixel final images, you can capture up to 30 images in a second using the special birth rate setting. There are quite a few high-tech wow features in the NX30, and besides the touchscreen, my favorite wow feature is the built-in Wi-Fi. It does more than I can cover in a brief review like this, but some of the highlights are the fact that you can upload directly to a number of online services like Flickr and Dropbox. You can connect to a printer or a PC. If you have an Android or other smart device with NFC, and that's near field communication, it will play nicely with the NX30. And my favorite thing is the free iOS or Android app called Smart Remote Viewfinder Pro. The camera lets you set up an ad hoc network so you don't need to be near a Wi-Fi access point. Then the free app lets you control loads of features like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, the focus point, taking pictures, and even starting video recording remotely. The funny thing about the remote video recording in the iOS app is that there were a couple of pop-up messages in Japanese. I have no idea what they said, but the remote video start and stop worked just fine for me. There's a little lag as you make camera setting adjustments, but you get to see the effects of your remote adjustments on your smartphone. And with all that control, this is among the best Wi-Fi remotes on the market. To do all that Wi-Fi stuff, you'll need to put the NX30 in Wi-Fi mode using that position on the mode dial on top of the camera. That dial also has program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and full manual modes. There are two user-definable custom mode dial presets, and there's a full auto for point-and-shoot style shooting. There's a smart position that you can think of as like a scene mode, where you tell the camera about the kind of environment you're shooting and all the settings are adjusted for you. And the final mode dial position is the eye function position, which takes advantage of the eye function controls if you're using an eye function equipped lens. Now, if you're new to Samsung and their NX mount lens family, the first thing to know is that the collection of available lenses is certainly respectable, especially if you consider other brands of lenses besides Samsung. The NX30 can even capture video and stills in 3D with an optional 3D lens, and many of the Samsung brand lenses have an eye function button and a related control ring. Now, the 18 to 55 lens that I tested had it, and the 30 millimeter pancake I tested didn't have it. In most any shooting mode, pressing the eye function button accesses various settings that you might want to adjust, like ISO or white balance. Press it repeatedly to go to the next option. And there's some customization you can assign to the eye function button so that you can add or remove the variables that you'd like to control. For the record though, this doesn't mean that you don't have control over things like ISO or white balance if you don't happen to be using an eye function lens. Just press the function button on the back and you get a smart panel with the controls you need. The eye function button on an eye function equipped lens just gives you quick access to the things you might want to adjust. But then, if you switch to the eye function mode on the mode dial, you have different options from that eye function lens control, like eye depth, to dial in depth of field or eye contrast. There's a function called eye zoom, but because of how it works, I would probably never use it. It's really just in-camera cropping and there isn't technically any zooming going on. The video capabilities of this camera are more impressive than I expected. It can capture 1080 60p video. That's really good, but by itself, that's not amazing. But there are other reasons enthusiast videographers will really like this camera. 
That tilting electronic viewfinder is one reason, and so is the twist flip LCD. There's a microphone jack and adjustable volume control. And while you're filming, you can manually adjust shutter speed and aperture on the fly. And while you can plug into HDMI with an optional cable for viewing videos and images on your large flat screen, the camera can also stream a live 1080p image via the HDMI cable and you can remove all the icons and overlays so you get a live video feed. And while pro videographers probably won't be using this next function, you can set the video to fade in or out or both as you record videos. There are a few other things I should mention which didn't really fall into any of my earlier descriptions. The camera plugs into USB to charge the battery and there's no separate charger. And since you can expect about 360 shots per charge, you'll probably want to pick up an optional charger and an extra battery when you buy this camera. There's a built-in pop-up flash with lots of flash power control. There are a number of options for capturing brackets of photos. There's an interval capture option. The PDF manual that comes with the CD is actually quite good with a great opening section to help beginning photographers understand photography concepts. There's a copy of Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 5. Let me be clear though, this isn't Photoshop. It's Photoshop Lightroom. But I'd rather have that with my new camera than just about any manufacturer specific software package, so it is a nice bonus. So are you starting to understand why I think of this as a feature packed camera? If you already have some NX mount lenses, it's a great rig. If you're looking for great Wi-Fi connectivity and remote control or a baby monitor, that's right, one of the documented functions is a baby monitor mode. Or if you're looking for the most features in this class of cameras, You'll be hard pressed to find a camera that does more than this one. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, 7 day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.